And we have Dr. Tungani Mushiri in studio. Welcome, sir. Now, Asante Kokuru Ditena. <laughs> Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Yes. yes. So today we're talking about um, ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. and it is one among the leading cancers that actually cause the death when it comes to the cancers that affect women. Yes. And most of the times we really do not talk about it. We'll talk about other cancers, but we'll leave out this one. So it is important that we're having this conversation today. Yes. And maybe we could start with what is it? Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, perhaps uh, as we begin, uh, yes. somebody may be asking, what yes. is the ovary? Okay, and, uh, let's start there. Perhaps it's good to uh, to elaborate there. Yes. Uh, so that uh, we are together as mm. we continue with the discussion. Okay. And the ovaries are the female organs of reproduction. Um, they are paired organs uh, located uh, in the pelvis. That is the lowermost uh, part of the, uh, the abdomen. Mm -hmm. And their work is mainly to produce the female eggs and the female hormones of reproduction. Now, to explain further mm -hmm. is that uh, every month in a woman of childbearing uh, age, every month or so, uh, the ovary uh, forms a tiny fluid-filled cavity um, that contains the female egg. Mm -hmm. And at the end of uh, the cycle, um, the cyst grows uh, to a certain size and ruptures releasing the egg. Now that is called ovulation. Now that this happens perpetually uh, during the childbearing ages of the woman until she reaches menopause. Um, I hope I did not get too technical. No, 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 no. Yes. You, that was perfect. Yes. That was perfect okay. for us to start there and understand. Yes. So it wasn't too technical. All right. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yes. Yeah, so to come back to cancer, we do know that uh, cancer is uh, sort of disorderly or uh, overgrowth of body cells yes. that leads to destruction of tissues. Now in the ovary, this can happen, uh, has been found to happen to different types of cells because the ovary has different types of cells. And commonly, it happens to the cells covering the ovary. Um, however, it can also happen to the cells that I talked about that produce the eggs. It can also happen to the cells that produce the hormones. Okay. As we look further into uh, this disease, we'll understand the implications of this because there are different types of tumors that will arise from them. Um, there is also a tiny fraction of cancers that will come from other organs and migrate to the ovary, mm -hmm. the so-called secondary tumors, but these are less common. And that in a nutshell is what ovarian cancer is. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we've explained where it happens, and most people would ask why, or is it, is it, a, is it genetic? Mm -hmm. Are there pre uh, predisposing factors that mm -hmm. would lead to this? Okay. Now, like with many things in medicine, yeah. there's a lot of mystery that surrounds uh, ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. But we have found some risk factors uh, to this disease. Okay. And one of them is that uh, there is a genetic predisposition. Mm. That can happen. Either you as a person um, have some certain mutations in your genes that put you at risk of ovary, ovarian cancer. It can also be that it runs in the family, that your mom or uh, a close relative had either ovarian cancer and to some extent other cancers uh, of the body. And uh, commonly in this is the breast, breast cancer. Others include uh, the colon, cancer of the colon or cancer of the rectum. And some genes uh, involved in these cancers can also put you at risk of ovarian cancer. Another thing that has been postulated is that frequent ovulation. Um, when I described that process, yes. it sounded like uh, it's an insult that happens to the ovary every month. <laughs> and uh, Sometimes it feels <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now this has been postulated that if it happens over a long time, then a woman can be at risk. What is uh, over a long time? Now, um, to elaborate further is that okay. if your cycle started very early and maybe ended very late, mm -hmm. or um, you have not had interruptions in uh, ovulation, what do I mean? Um, childbearing, we do know that uh, 
when you're pregnant, you don't ovulate. And when you breastfeed, the uh, period where you're not ovulating is prolonged. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that has been postulated. Um, and it has also been shown that if you take uh, the combined oral contraceptives, then your risk uh, reduces because uh, probably uh, it is thought that the reduction in ovulation uh, becomes protec protective. So these are some of uh, the known risk factors. Mm -hmm. There are, of course, uh, many others, and we may not dwell into them so much because probably the evidence is not very clear out okay. there, and it may uh, confuse further. Question, yes. I, I, just to see if I understood it well, Dr. Mm -hmm. So if the process is long, so if I have ovulated for a long time, that yes. means I probably have not had children mm -hmm. and I'm in my 40s. There's yes. a huge chance yes. that I might get ovarian cancer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that it or did I get my own things? Now, um, it's good to put a caveat to this okay. statement. Yes. Okay. So that we don't put the viewer... Uh, <laughs> really worried. Uh, very worried, <laughs> anxious. <laughs> Um, there is an adage in medicine that diseases don't read books. I okay. mean, there's the textbook description that no uh, lack of uh, pregnancy leads to this. Mm. But things can be different. Okay. Um, that is the vituqua ground, the so difference. to speak. <laughs> yeah. So it does not mean that if you do not get children or mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's your choice or out of circumstances mm -hmm. that definitely you will get ovarian cancer. Okay. It's just that the risk is slightly higher okay. and most of these things are postulations like I said. Mm. Uh, okay. Yes. So what would be the way to check? So for breast cancer there are checkups that yes. we are even told how to do it at home, mm -hmm. right? How do we check then for ovarian cancer? Okay. Now this is uh, one of those uh, sort of quiet cancers mm. and uh, I will explain why. Okay. Because the presentation can be very varied. That is how a, a person with cancer of the ovary presents can be so different from one person to the next. And this is because there are two organs, depending on whether it's one or two that are uh, affected. The, it, it can be different for different people. There are different types of cells, I said, that yes. are affected, yes. which will affect uh, how the function of the body uh, responds to that. And then again, the ovary grows in an area with a lot of potential space. So it can grow to a very large size without causing any symptoms. Mm. That being said, um, it's not that there are lack symptoms of this disease. Okay. And uh, these symptoms can result either from the growth, the, the change in size. As the ovary grows, it will start compressing on other organs. There are organs close to it. Um, there is the gut, there is the bladder. And this can lead to symptoms like bloating. You can see a bump in the lower abdomen. Uh, it can lead to constipation. Sometimes if it's pressing on the bladder, you may have to empty your bladder faster because the capacity is reduced and most of the times they're just vague uh, abdominal symptoms. Mm. At times if it's producing fluids and some of the tumors produce fluid and the fluid gets a lot, your abdomen can grow very big and look like you're pregnant. Yeah. So picking up on some of these symptoms, um, a doctor can be able to ask for more uh, tests and one of the tests that we do is an ultrasound. Okay. This one is able to pick any abnormal growths in the ovary and if they are picked there are some blood tests that can help with uh, further differentiating the type of growth. So we can do an ultrasound yeah. and if we pick something we may want to do some blood tests to confirm. Oh goodness. So the only way to know is when now I can't hold my pee. Or you know what I mean? Like it's, mm -hmm. uh, there's no way to check before because it's very quiet. You never know if it's wrong, mm -hmm. if something is wrong with you mm -hmm. until it's gotten to a certain pressing point. Um, you see how we go for yes. pap smear? Yes. Could that help? Yes. Now, 
this is one of the unfortunate uh, <laughs> it's so cases. unfortunate i am so frustrated because <laughs> <laughs> um if you if you look at uh, people who have tried to advocate for screening yes um they have not come up with something that is uh, you know mass like the way there is a pap smear uh, yes. that can be rolled out to the masses yeah no now what you'll find is that what is advocated is for women who are at high risk. Ah, okay. Okay. Like if you have a, fam a history mm. of maybe the other ovary was affected, mm. or there is a family history, maybe your mom or a close relative mm. had ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. or some breast cancers that are associated with ovarian cancer. Okay. Now these women can be screened for the genetic mutations, and now actions can be taken. And I think if you've been following uh, World Matters, you'll hear the story of Angelina Jolie. And I think she had uh, one of the mutations. Yeah. So there is that option. Okay. However, for mass screening, we are still um, working on that. Oh. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I'm just feeling like, why? <laughs> <laughs> but it happens and... This this is where we are at. So if you have any yeah. questions whatsoever when it comes to ovarian cancer, because I have plenty and I'm welcoming your questions as well. So send those in triple one triple four triple one. That is our SMS line. Switch TV K on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. And for this particular segment, we will be giving away the hampers. The more you send in your questions, so just send in your questions concerning ovarian cancer on triple one triple four triple one and we'll just randomly just give out five for this segment but just before we go on a break let me just give you the winners of the very first um conversation we had with jeff and the first winner says leading myself and defining my own terms of success is how i move out of the rat race that is true 313 is those are the last three digits of your uh, number morning we call him naomi we pull ourselves from the daily rat race by leaving our purpose in life your number ends at 587 hello Mikali. the answers are one should have goals that is one that is gr one grow and love to experience uh nothing eh? and nothing is that money without hmm? mission oh money without mission is empty i am naomi <laughs> enjoying the show from embu your number ends at 353 hi mikali i'm from gashia decision i make believe in yourself love take an action write down expectations i think guys are just summarizing everything that jeff has said but that means you were paying attention 487 is uh th those are the last three digits of your number and the last one, good morning, Mikali. The answer to the question is believing in yourself, living life by yourself, change cycles, destiny is shaped by decision. It is Wes from Rero. I hope I win. Yes, guess what? You get yourself a hamper. Your number ends with an 818. And we're going to take a very short commercial break and be back. Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mukali. We have Dr. Tungani in studio. We are talking matters of ovarian cancer. And I'm already feeling, my God, what is this? Why? Why? But we're here to answer all the questions that you may have concerning um, this type of cancer. We've learned what it feels like, the symptoms that it shows, and how you can get a screening if you feel any of the symptoms or if you have a relative, a close relative, your mom, grandma, who's suffered the same or breast cancer that is related to the ovarian cancer. So you can get screening to just check if you're okay. All right. Other than that, maswali ni mingi. Ya kwanza, I had my ovaries removed. Yes. Could I still get ovarian cancer? Now, um, the straight answer would be no. Okay. However, uh, what you'd want to ask yourself would be, was it both ovaries that were removed? And was it the full ovary that was removed? Because sometimes you go for ovarian surgery just for removal of a cyst, and part of the ovary is left. Um, other than that, um, it has been shown that some of the uh, cancer from the ovary does not even originate from the ovary itself. Okay. It can come from the covering of the intestines called the peritoneum or the fallopian tubes. So you may want to ask yourself um, if they were diseased uh, ovaries, was the full extent of the disease removed. Mm. 
Okay. So okay. that uh, okay. so the question the answer might be no. Yes. But, but. there is a but. Okay. Yes. Okay. So oh. for this particular person who's thinking of it like that mm -hmm. might need to get screened as well. Yes. To just be sure. Yes. That uh, no there's no ovarian cancer. Yeah. if there was part of the ovaries that was uh, that has remained yes okay. and actually um, even after surgery for ovarian cancer mm -hmm. follow-up is important so okay. that we don't have a remnants of the disease that mm. could cause uh, danger in, uh, in the future okay mm -hmm. you mentioned during the break that uh, it, it grows slowly it's a yes. very it has a slow burn yes. uh, how slow is slow do we have a possible time frame of before now I start feeling like I need to go see a doctor or something is wrong with me or I'm looking pregnant and I'm not pregnant? It's a disease of variety, okay. uh, so okay. to speak. Okay. Um, because, like I said, there are different types. Mm. Um, there are those ones that, uh, the more common ones, are confined within the ovary mm -hmm. for longer. Okay. That is, they will grow uh, mm -hmm. in the ovary without spreading mm -hmm. uh, much longer. However, they are the aggressive types that uh, the minute they show up in the ovary, they start spreading. And uh, it's not uh, written in stone that there is this time frame. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, can early menopause, especially if I have never given birth, predispose me to ovarian cancer? I would say late menopause uh, for the reasons I explained. Um, the postulation is that ovulation uh, is a risk factor. So early menopause theoretically uh, might be uh, protective. Ah, uh, early menopause. Yes. Do you realize we but have no control over these things? No, not Like at all. we were just <laughs> created and given these <laughs> things that are giving us problems. <laughs> <laughs> Please ask the doctor if one can have ovarian cancer when she's pregnant. My name is Abby from Nairobi. Yes. Um, like I said, I'll repeat the cliche statement I used that diseases don't read books. Yeah. And uh, you may have cancer and get pregnant. Um, I don't know how often cancer starts in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some certain types of uh, cancers that are associated with the, um, can I call it the reproductive function, okay. called choriocarcinomas, that are associated with pregnancy generally. Okay. Yes. And, preg and, pre and pregnancy events. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. We'll just go with choriocarcinoma. <laughs> Carcinoma is cancer, right? <laughs> yes. So, in Guinea. <laughs> Hi, Mikali. Please ask Doc Kama. Fibroids can cause ovarian cancer. My name is Ses Niwamuranga. No. Um, fibroids are benign growths of the uterus, and they are on the uterus. A very tiny fraction of fibroids uh, turn into cancer, and they do not turn into ovarian cancer. If they do, uh, they do turn to another different kind of cancer. So fibroids can well, a very, a very, very tiny, tiny per percentage. percentage. Okay. Yes. Hi, Mukali. Uh, say, <laughs> okay, fine. That is that is not for us. Please <laughs> let's send questions that are about. <laughs> Hi, Mukali. Uh, please ask Dr. How will we know if the ovarian cancer has come back? What should I watch out for? Okay. Um, I'm assuming this is somebody who was treated. Yes. Um, probably either went for surgery or chemotherapy. Now the thing is that the doctor has to give you a follow-up. First of all, whatever was removed has to be taken to a pathologist so that they identify the exact type of cancer. Um, from there we know the kind of prognosis that you have. Mm -hmm. um, and now we make a follow-up plan for you. There are people who go for uh, the genetic uh, testing. There are people who go for uh, blood tests. And there are people who will have frequent uh, imaging, either uh, an ultrasound, an MRI, or a CT scan, depending on the type of cancer and the type of treatment that they got. Okay. So there are various modalities. Mm -hmm. It's all dependent on the kind of cancer that you had. Okay. Yes. Okay. 
um, is ovarian cysts related to ovarian cancer because they represent themselves in almost the same way? Okay. Um, let me uh, say that the work of the ovary every month is to make cysts. Cysts that uh, rupture and produce the female egg. I think I explained that earlier. Um, a lot of times these cysts will not rupture like clockwork. So some will persist and just stay in the ovaries, ovarian cysts. Most of them are harmless. They will go away with time uh, without any intervention. So a lot of women have ovarian cysts that have no relation completely to cancer. That said, there might be a tiny portion of cysts that can turn cancerous. Um, they may be of a different origin, but by and large, most cysts are harmless and do not even need any intervention. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hi, Mikali. I had a pelvic scan and I was told I have hemorrhagic cyst, mm -hmm. four centimeters and has ruptured. My appointment with the gyna is a month to come. Should I be worried? Yes. So you understand this. Maybe yes. you can start by explaining to us what it is because... A I, hemorrhagic cyst. cyst. Yes. Now there are various types of cysts uh, um, that can occur in the ovary. A lot of them uh, in the women of childbearing age because that's when the ovary is most active. It keeps, it's an organ, a dynamic organ. It keeps changing in size, in function. Every month it's producing cysts. And this can, uh, uh, can turn into those cysts. Now the different types um, depend on what time, when, when in the cycle it occurred. If it was the egg that uh, refused to rupture, um, we call it a follicular cyst, it has no issue. If it doesn't grow too much in size, we just let it be. There are other types of cysts that may produce hormones. One of them is called a luteocyst. It may produce some hormones that may alter uh, your body function. You may find uh, a woman with maybe beard because it's producing male hormones. Mm -hmm. There are those cysts that can alter the function but still not be cancer. Then we have uh, probably what she's mentioning as a hemorrhagic cyst which can be uh, another disease condition presenting in the ovary. Common is what we call endometriosis. We know endometriosis is uh, when the lining of the uterus uh, is found in other areas. It can be found in the uterus, in the ovary, where it can start uh, producing uh, the kind of bleeding that uh, they are talking about, and it forms a hemorrhagic cyst, which often is painful. And uh, when the scan is done, they may uh, call it a hemorrhagic cyst. Okay. So if it's not causing issues, an appointment uh, with a gynecologist in a month's time is reasonable and uh, somebody should not panic. But if there are symptoms, you can try and fast track uh, your appointment. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. <coughs> Hi, Mikali. My question is whether someone diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome and failed to complete treatment is at risk of ovarian cancer. Okay. Um, the association between polycystic ovaries and ovarian cancer may not be so clear. And the uh, issues around polycystic ovary uh, that may be of concern may be a bit different and ovarian cancer might not be top of the list. Um, because there are other issues that are associated uh, with polycystic ovaries like um, infertility, um, issues to do with diabetes or hypertension. Now those may be more worrying um, than ovarian cancer. So it's still advisable to complete treatment for polycystic ovaries for mm -hmm. those other complications. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, good morning, Mikali. I was treated for uterine cancer five years ago, am I at risk of ovarian cancer? Okay. Um, probably there is more we would like to know uh, mm -hmm. from that um, because there are different modalities of treating uterine cancer. 
and one of the treatments is removal of the uterus plus the ovaries, which would uh, completely reduce your risk of ovarian cancer. So if that did happen, then your chances of getting ovarian cancer are obviously low because the tubes and the ovaries were removed. However, if the treatment uh, was not uh, surgery, mm -hmm. then there, is, there might be a small risk of ovarian cancer. So it would be important to be on follow-up. Okay. Mm. How likely is the ovarian cancer to spread elsewhere? Most cancers uh, have a very ch high chance of spreading. Mm -hmm. With the ovaries, um, this is an organ that is growing next to other organs. Mm -hmm. The fallopian tubes, the yeah. uterus, um, the gut, the covering of the intestines called the peritoneum, and the bladder is also close by. So these tumors commonly spread um, from one ovary to the other from the ovary to the fallopian tube to the uterus mm -hmm. and also to the covering of the intestines called the peritoneum. Now from the peritoneum, it can go to very many uh, organs in the abdomen. Uh, it can go even up to the liver. Another common uh, site for this uh, cancer is the lungs, where the patient comes with fluid in the lungs. <coughs> so it can spread. Okay. Yes. Hey, Abby again here. After one gets ovarian cancer, does it affect your hormones um, extent, <coughs> to an extent that you have very imbalanced hormones and you get late periods, like very late sometimes, very early periods, and maybe you get miscarriages time to time? Um, that sounds like a different uh, condition to me. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are those ovarian cancers that produce hormones mm -hmm. and they affect the functioning of the body. Mm -hmm. But before it gets to that, you'd have more symptoms other than miscarriages and missed periods. You'd really be sick before it gets to that stage. So you may be having something different um, and blaming it on ovarian cancer. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I have been a victim of ovarian cysts which has seen me go through four operations the last operation my ovaries were removed when i was 46 now i'm living through a lot of pain the whole through the whole body what's your advice okay um of course the first advice would be uh, take charge of your health care find out what was done what kind of surgery was done, mm -hmm. and whatever was removed, uh, was it subjected to some pathological uh, testing so that uh, you are told whether it was benign or there was some malignant element to it. And then after that, uh, it's known that when the ovaries are removed, if both ovaries are removed, the woman goes into menopause. And there are symptoms associated with menopause. Okay. And they can be very vague. Uh, some overt and probably what she's going through might be the symptoms of menopause if both ovaries were removed. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, huh, where are we? Good morning, Wikali. I'm Anne from Kasarani. The session is so educative and the government should be fast on how to detect whether one has ovarian cancer early enough so that our mothers, sisters, daughters can reduce the suffering they go through because diseases don't read books. Thanks. They're using your words against you. <laughs> I agree. I feel a bit frustrated. <laughs> but okay. uh, that's what it is on the ground. And yes. now that we know, then we can actually now do something about it. We can be more vigilant to just get screenings even if you're not from a lineage that actually has these conditions you can actually just walk in and just have uh, yourself checked so mm -hmm. now that we know that means we have the power to do something about it uh hi wikali mm -hmm. i went to a gynecologist and found i had pcos should i be should i worry about getting pregnant because i'm in my child bearing years yes um we, when we talk about uh, PCOS, um, it's a different topic. But yes, what we know is that there is a wide spectrum of how people uh, are affected by PCOS. Mm -hmm. There are those who may not have overt symptoms. 
there are those who get very severe symptoms. There are those who may not get issues with conception. There are those who will have issues with conception. So it all depends with the individual. And if uh, you are able to try to get pregnant, I would advise that you do that. Then if you have issues getting pregnant, then see your gynecologist so that your care package is individualized based on your needs. Mm. Yes. See, I'm pregnant, Dr. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and during your pregnancy, you realize you have ovarian cancer. Yes. Is there a way to treat that and not harm baby? It's a huge dilemma. <laughs> and uh, generally, cancer in pregnancy is a huge dilemma. Okay. And even if you, if you, if you look for what has been written about it yes is very little so most of the times doctors make decisions based mm -hmm. on the patient mm -hmm. and based on uh, the needs of the patient yeah we've had people with uh, even stage 4 disease saying asking you what are my chances of getting pregnant yes and uh, when i'm pregnant um, how will my treatment be and sometimes you tell them that it may involve removal of the ovaries or uh, chemo chemotherapy that may harm the ovaries. And they tell you, then I better have this child and then we continue with treatment. And there are those people who will tell you, no, we can, uh, we can start treatment if it harms the baby, I, I don't mind. So it's individualized. Okay. Yes. And you have to look at the patient from now from a human point. Yes. Because this is somebody uh, probably was looking forward to being a mother. Mm. And now you're telling them that if we remove this ovaries, maybe the pregnancy may uh, terminate and maybe you cannot get pregnant again. Yeah. So you have to have that human touch to, to individualize uh, treatment. Yeah. Dr. Ari, thank you so much for being very gentle with this very heavy <laughs> with this very heavy topic but we appreciate mm -hmm. because knowledge is power that means now we know yes. and that we can do something about it yes. how can people get in touch with you directly maswali ni mengi wakupate wakulize yes um you can get me uh, in the general area of ruiro or juja um if you want to book an appointment the phone number is 0765 00 um, you can reach on WhatsApp uh, using the number 0780-477-862 or you can look for Dr. Tungani Mushiri on social media, Facebook, YouTube and you can get me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Asante sana, Dr. All right. And thank you so much for sending in your questions. We highly, highly appreciate that. But the gift hamper was just for the first five. But Pia Mesaidi Kassindio. So I'm just going to quickly read out the last digits. Um, 192 your number ends with 192 and the other one abby from nairobi number ends with 543 and you don't leave your name number ends with a 072 and um you also don't leave your name number ends with a 988 and the last one your number ends with a 198 so congratulations and still stay tuned because i still have 10 more giveaways courtesy of hacker industries we'll be right back after this break <laughs>